Hey guys, Maritza here. Just wanted to show you what the um, makeover that I had done looks like. And uh, she did an amazing job. Her name is Chelsea. And she's got a little, I don't know if you guys can see that, Chelsea Forever Beauty. And uh, she's located here in Silver City. I don't wait. Oh, I don't know if you guys could see her information. But I'll go ahead and, and put it in the description area. She did a marvelous job on the eyes and put some, um, I don't know if I could see it right there. And um, so I've got a couple of things. Um, Ashley donated uh, some money so that I could pick up a couple of things and I got myself a, um, a lipstick, a lip sense by seam, let me see here, and a gloss. And she uh, gave me some samples, some uh, lip um, moisturizers and things like that, but I am really, really happy with it and, and it looks really, really nice. I can't wait till the facial hair thing gets totally resolved because the skin gets really, uh, what's the word I'm trying to use? Porous from shaving and stuff like that, which is no fun. But I'm sure with time and with using the laser machine, that'll all go away um, eventually. And I'm you know, praying to God that that'll happen. Um, I wanted to touch base on the situation or you know, several situations that are are happening in, in Facebook. And, you know, first of all, I want to say I'm not going to be intimidated and I'm not going to be shamed by your version of God, by your version of your understanding of what you think God wants. If you read the Bible, and I'm talking about reading the Bible, not cherry picking, not just reading a little part of it. You're going to read something, read the whole chapter so you can understand it better. The famous line that people love to use is thou shall not judge. But that's all they, they leave it at that. You don't read the, the whole intention of Christ was that he doesn't want you to be a hypocrite. He doesn't want us to be a hypocrite. And he wants us to judge rightly. But we are to expose evil. That is within the scripture as well. So it's like people that walk around living in sin. Yes, you're not supposed to be judging. But for those of us that are no longer living in sin, and we have taken on the mind and heart of Christ and we're living in our spiritual sense versus our cardinal sense. Then sin is not part of our life. And not to say that, you know, that you can't completely eliminate sin, but you can try your best. That's the whole concept. That's like that's what it means to be like Christ, to live righteously. What it also means is for you to carry your cross. He died on that cross and those nails got driven inside of him and he was pained beyond understanding. So what is it so hard for you to carry your cross and to sacrifice yourself and stop living from the flesh, but instead living from your spirit? When you live in the spirit, Sin is not even a, a vocabulary. It's not even a thought process because the spirit is like Christ. When the Holy Spirit enters you, you become like him. That's the whole concept. You're, you're twisting the Bible. You're twisting the understanding of God. Also that you could live based on your desires. And it doesn't work that way. He very specifically said, go sin no more. So when you get the verse, he who has no sin cast the first stone, you know, you forget the rest of the passage, which at the end means or says, go sin no more. That's a whole concept. We want to be righteous like Christ. We want to live untainted by these flesh. You want to live in the spirit. When you live in the spirit, you're not part of this earthly realm. You don't live for your desires. You live to please him because that was the reason we were created is to please him. So it's fruitless for you to try to 
come to my wall and tell me what you believe, the corruption version of your belief of God. I'm following the living word of God and I'm not trying to find an excuse as you are to continue living in filth. That's the bottom line. If my words convict you, there's something inside of you that you need to work on. It's as simple as that. And you throw the words love around. Do you even know what love means? Love means sacrifice. Love means being righteous. Love doesn't just mean what the human being lustful, self-stroking, self-satisfying, feel good, fuzzy wuzzy feeling. When you love your children, do you let them play with fire and knives? Because you love them, so you're going to let them do what they want? No. You take the fire away. You take the knives away. You tell them, no, you're not allowed to do this. You instill laws and rules to keep your children safe. Every law that God has given us is for a reason. Us is not to question it, but to obey. And I know that things are between you and God. I'm not your judge. He will be your judge. But we are to expose evil. We are to plant seeds. This is a rescue mission. I do what I do because I love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't care less. I'd be worried about me and my salvation. But we are told by God to preach the good word, to minister, to plant seeds, to expose evil. This is why we are the way we are today, because Christians have become lukewarm. And they don't want to be bothered because they don't like being shamed. Well, let me tell you, I got really thick skin. And I don't care what you say and what you throw my way. I will never stop. And if you feel convicted by my words, then I'm doing my job. And hopefully you'll get convicted enough to stop sinning. And as Jesus said, go and sin no more. All right, guys, that's about it for today. Love you guys, but remember to always love yourselves too and love dad. Bye-bye now.